Hello students, in today's lecture we will discuss about the development of phase. Now from this topic you will have a question in exam, write down the embryological basis of your cleft lip and the oblique cleft, clear? So these are the two different terms, oblique cleft and cleft lip. So let us discuss the development of phase first. So my dear students, when you will see the development of phase, the first and most important thing is that there are formation of five mesodermal processes and these processes appears in the fourth week around the developing oral cavity. Now when you will see the oral cavity, it is formed when there is a formation of head fold or you can say the cranial folding. So when the folding is taking place, you know that this is the fold and in this fold you will have the development of four brain vesicles. Now what will happen that there is a surface depression is seen between the brain vesicle and this pericardial region and this is known as stomodium. Now later on what will happen, this stomodium is surrounded by the five swellings and these swellings, one is known as frontonasal process. Now this frontonasal process is nothing but it is a mesodermal area which is overlying the four brain vesicle. So the first is frontonasal process which is actually the upper part of the stomodium and it is projecting from superiorly and it is the area which is overlying the four brain vesicle. Then you will have the two more processes on the both right and left side, these are known as maxillary and mandibular process. You know that later on there is a appearance of the pharyngeal arches. So in this area you will have the formation of the pharyngeal arches which are going to form your neck region. So there are two processes which are formed by the splitting of the first pharyngeal arch. The upper one is known as maxillary process and the lower one is known as mandibular process. Clear? So this is what you are seeing from the side. When you will see from the ventral surface how it appears. Now in the ventral surface you will find that this is your frontonasal process and that is covering the superior part of the developing stomodium. Now here you will have the formation of your two processes which are the part of first pharyngeal arch. This is known as maxillary process, this is mandibular process. So in this way this developing oral cavity is surrounded by the five processes, frontonasal, maxillary and mandibular, clear? Now right and left mandibular process actually meet with each other and that is why it uh, looks like a single process. But we know that the arches are paired arches which are developing on right and left side and later on they will fuse in the midline, clear? Now what will happen? Now when we are talking about the stages of the phase development, first stage is formation of nasal plecord on the frontonasal process. So here in this diagram you can see that this is your four brain vesicle, this is your area of oral cavity that is stomodium and this is your developing heart. Now here there is the appearance of the pharyngeal arches. Now in the next part what will happen on this area of frontonasal process, you can see there is the appearance of a depression is known as nasal area. Now this is a nasal placard which initially appears as ectodermal thickening and later on a depression appears in this placard is known as nasal pit. Now here you are able to see one more thing is the lens placard. Lens placard are the areas which develop on the side of the frontonasal process. What does it mean? That our eyes are not present on the front initially in the embryo. These eyes develop on the side and later on they will shift on the anterior aspect. So anteriorly you will have formation of two nasal areas on the side which will shift to the definitive area and the eyes will also shift anteriorly. So when you will see the inferior side of this, how it looks like? This is the inferior or ventral view where you can see that this is your frontal process, this is your maxillary area, this is your mandibular process, this is your oral cavity, clear? Now in this frontal frontonasal process, you can see that these are the two pits are appearing, these are known as nasal pit and this nasal pit is surrounded by this elevated margin and these elevated margins are known as nasal prominence. Now the lateral side of the prominence is known as lateral nasal prominence and this medial side of the prominence is known as medial nasal prominence, clear? So let us see this steps one by one. So first what will happen, there is a appearance of nasal placard and these nasal placards are the site of the future nostrils, clear? And they are appearing on the frontonasal process. Later on the nasal placard is having a depression is known as pit 
and once the pit is appear there is a elevation areas are formed in which are known as median and lateral nasal prominences but as soon as the pit is appear it will get its continuation with the developing oral cavity or stomodium clear now in the next phase what will happen that the maxillary processes then start their growth and they will increase in the size and they will uh, grow uh, towards the midline and what will happen when they are growing towards the midline there is a sequence of the fusion now what is the sequence now this is an important thing to understand that maxillary process first fuse with the medial nasal process and later on it will fuse with the lateral nasal process now this is a very important thing to understand because what will happen that initially the nasal pit is having a continuity with the stomodium but by the fusion of maxillary process and medial na nasal process this continuity is no more and you have a separation of the nasal pit with the oral cavity now that you can appreciate here that what is happening this is your thickening now this thickening on the lateral side is known as lateral nasal process and this thickening on the medial side is known as medial nasal process now when this maxillary process is growing towards the midline now first you can see there is a fusion occurs between the medial and maxillary process so this fusion of medial process and maxillary process occurs first and because of this fusion this continuity of the nasal cavity and oral cavity is no more so this fusion separates your developing nostril from the oral cavity clear later on here you can see there is a one more groove is present now this groove which is visible here is this area now this is the area which is actually going towards this developing lens placard or your eyes so later on what will happen this fusion of this lateral nasal process and maxillary process is taking place clear so what is the fusions are taking place the fusions are taking place between the three processes what are these three processes so first process is your maxillary process second process is medial nasal process third is your lateral nasal process so what is the sequence of fusion first the sequence is there is a fusion of maxillary and medial nasal process and what is the effect of this fusion now the continuation between the nasal cavity and developing oral cavity is uh, breaked and this continuity breaked so there is a separation occurs second fusion occurs between the lateral nasal process and maxillary process so it break the continuity with the developing eyes or lens placard with your nasal area clear so these are the some important steps which you have to write down in exam now you can revise this development in these diagram also so first there is a appearance of the uh, nasal placard or olfactory placard and once the plate is formed there is a formation of two swellings the swellings on the medial side is known as medial nasal process the swellings on the sides are known as lateral nasal process now once the pit will become deep you can see the continuity is there of the pit with the stomodium but when the fusion will take place what is happening that this is the medial nasal process so these medial nasal process also fuse with each other and along with that the medial nasal process fuse first with the maxillary process and with this fusion you can see that now the nostril or this nasal cavity is separated from this developing oral cavity and simultaneously there is a fusion is taking place along this border where you will have the fusion of lateral nasal process with the maxillary process clear so now what are the derivatives now when you will see the derivatives you will divide this face into the three part now this is the area which is formed by your mandibular process so mandibular process is going to form your lower lower lip then chin and the lower part of the cheek clear now when you will see this middle area now in this middle area what are the structures now these structures are forehead nose and the center portion of the upper lip which is known as philtrum philtrum is a depression which you are able to feel in your upper lip now these areas develop from the frontonasal process so frontonasal fo process from the forehead external nose septum and your philtrum of upper lip now this area is going to form by the maxillary process so maxillary process is going to form your upper part of the cheek and maxillary process is going to form these lateral sides of your upper lip clear 
not the middle portion of upper lip because middle portion develops from frontonasal process. But my dear students, the sensory supply of this upper lip is completely comes from the maxillary nerve. Because you have to understand that frontonasal process derivative supplied by the ophthalmic division, the derivative of maxillary process supplied by maxillary division and mandibular process supplied by mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. But the skin of the whole upper lip is supplied by the maxillary division. Why? The only reason is that once the ectoderm is going to form your outer area of the skin, that skin purely comes from the maxillary process. So, because this ectodermal covering of upper lip comes from the maxillary process, that is why the sensory supply of the upper lip is not by the ophthalmic division, it comes from your maxillary division. So, if you will see the table form of the derivatives, the frontonasal process from the forehead and the bridge of nose, the medial nasal process. Now, what will happen about the medial nasal process? Here you can see in this diagram that both these medial nasal process also fuse with each other and with this fusion, this segment or middle portion is formed which is known as intermaxillary segment. So, what will happen? That both the medial nasal process fuse together to form the intermaxillary segments and these intermaxillary segments form the philtrum, premaxilla, primitive palate and tip of nose. Now what is this primitive palate? Now what will happen when the two sides of the uh, medial nasal prominences fuse with each other, they are going to form a area is known as your intermaxillary segment. Now, this intermaxillary segment give a shelf like projection on its deeper surface, which is not visible on the surface. And this deeper area, which is having a shelf like projection is going to form your part of the hard palate. And that is known as primary palate or primitive palate. And once it will get ossified, it is known as premaxilla. Clear? And the lateral nasal process, which is a part of frontonasal, is going to form your ala of the nose. So basically, when you are writing the medial and lateral nasal process, you are actually writing the derivatives of frontonasal process. And these are also the direct derivatives of frontonasal process. Then what is the structure developed from maxillary process? I told you that maxillary process form the upper cheek and it form the upper lip region except the center part. Then the mandibular process form the lower part of the cheek, it form the lower uh, jaw area and your chin. Clear? Now the next comes is the nasolacrimal sac and the formation of nasolacrimal duct. Now my dear students, if you will see this diagram again, now here you have to understand that when we are talking about the formation of the nasolacrimal duct, there is an area and that area is connecting the uh, your developing lens placard that means developing eye area with your nasal cavity. Now you know that in an adult you have a nasolacrimal duct which drains your lacrimal fluid into the your inferior meatus. So here where is the connection? Now the connection is here. Now this is your developing or, uh, lens placard area that means your developing eye and here you can see that this is the groove and through this groove you are having the connection with your developing nasal area. So what is this area? Now if you will see this area, this area in the lower part is lined by this process is the maxillary process and this groove in upper part lined by this area which is actually your lateral nasal process. That means your nasolacrimal duct is present in this furrow and this furrow is an area between the lateral nasal process and maxillary process. Clear? So when you are writing the formation of your development of nasolacrimal duct, you have to understand that it is a site which is between the maxillary process and lateral nasal process. And this area is initially marked by a groove and that groove is known as nasolacrimal groove or nasooptic furrow. Now later on what will happen, the ectoderm of this furo convert into a solid cord of the cells and that cord later on canalized to form the duct. And once the duct is formed, this will get detached and once the detachment is take place, the overlying ectoderm will grow and complete this furo. So furo is not appears later on and the cranial most part of this duct is convert into the sac. So when you are writing the nasolacrimal duct and the formation of lacrimal sac, what is the important area? The area is lies between the lateral nasal prominence and maxillary process. Clear? Now, we will move to the anomalies. So, there are most important two anomalies. One is known as cleft lip and second is known as oblique cleft or facial cleft. Now, students, what is cleft lip? 
Now, cleft lip means when there is a continuation occurs between the your oral area and nasal cavity. Now, if you will remember the uh, separation of oral cavity and nasal cavity, there is a fusion occurs between the nasal fold, nasal prominence and the maxillary uh, process. So, which nasal? Answer is medial nasal prominence. So, here in this uh, area where I told you that first there is a fusion occurs between the maxillary process and medial nasal process. So, here also you can see in this diagram when this maxillary process fuse with the medial nasal process, the continuity between the nasal and oral area is no more. So, if this fusion between the medial nasal process and maxillary process will not there, definitely the continuity will persist and that is going to form your cleft lip. Clear? So, what is the embryological basis of cleft lip? Cleft lip occurs when there is a failure of the fusion of maxillary process with medial nasal process. Clear? So, here in this diagram you can see that this is a cleft lip area and this cleft lip area can be occur unilaterally or bilaterally. Clear? So, what is the site of fusion? Again, it is a site of fusion between the medial nasal process and maxillary process. Clear? Now, sometimes you will have the midline hair lip. Now, midline cleft lip occurs when there is a failure of the fusion of both medial nasal process. So, if these medial nasal processes will fail to fuse in the midline, the uh, child born with a midline cleft lip which is known as hair lip. Clear? Now, there is a one more embryological uh, anomaly which is known as facial cleft or oblique cleft. Now, this facial cleft or oblique cleft means when the area of nasolacrimal groove persists. Which area? The area of nasolacrimal groove. Now, this nasolacrimal groove area lies between which processes? So, I just explain you that this area lies here. Now, this is the area between the lateral nasal process and maxillary process. So, when the maxillary process fails to fuse with the lateral nasal process, what will happen? This groove of nasolacrimal duct exposed outside and this is known as facial cleft or oblique cleft. Clear? Now, you will have two more anomalies, microstomia and macrostomia. But your micro and macrostomias are related with the abnormal placement of the angle of your mouth. Now, if these angle of mouth lies apart from each other, then it is known as macrostomia and when these angle of mouth comes very nearer to each other, in that condition the oral opening is very small is known as microstomia. So, now the question comes is that what is the embryological basis? So, embryological basis is that when this maxillary process fuse with the mandibular process, that means when the fusion occurs in this area, they will decide the position of your angle of mouth. So, in the micro and macrostomia, there is an abnormal fusion occurs between the maxillary and mandibular processes and because of these abnormal fusion, the angles are not present and they are uh, at their normal anatomical position and that will lead to the micro and macrostomias. Clear? So, here you can see in this diagram that this is a unilateral cleft lip. Here you can see this is a bilateral cleft lip. If the cleft comes in the midline, then it is known as hair lip or it is known as median cleft lip. Now, in this diagram, the cleft lip is associated with the cleft palate. So, how why the palate occurs that we will see in the coming session of the development of palate. Clear? So, now at the end of this session, I hope you have the idea about the frontonasal process, median and lateral nasal processes, mandibular process and maxillary process. Then you should have the idea how the fusion will take place, how the nasolacrimal duct is formed, what is the embryological basis of the hair lip, what is the cleft lip and what is the oblique cleft. Clear? So, this is all for the session. Thank you.